and welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Randy Labonte. So, Randy, can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I'd love to. And you'll stop me because I like to talk about myself. Um, I got into this game of technology and education probably 20 years ago uh, when I was looking around for a topic for my doctoral work. <clears throat> and I thought about the connections that I had in terms of with people in my K-12 network and moved into it. Um, prior to that, I was uh, taught elementary, secondary school, uh, and also took on leadership role in school admin and then got uh, work as well at the provincial level working with the BC Principals and Vice Principals Association. Did a lot of professional development, did a lot of workshops uh, with and for educators. So I've stayed in the teaching mode and the teaching mindset, uh, but now I've transitioned that into looking at teaching through and with technology. So I've really focused a lot since the, uh, the, the dissertation, which was a challenge and took quite a few years to get through because I was working part-time, but I work part-time working in technology. So I've had some business experience, some independent consulting work uh, as well. And that made it an easy fit for me to take over when our network, which Michael, you're part of, and you were part of the founding uh, group for the Canadian e-learning network, Can e Learn, as we call it. Uh, and it was uh, a privilege to be able to slip in to do some of the work related to operations and some of the strategic direction around for what we're doing with our national nonprofit. And it's opened up so many doors. Uh, it's really helped for a number of us to sort of make a difference moving forward. And that's, I think, has always been the drive. I've stayed true to my passions in that sense of it, uh, even though I'm not formally in the system, still serving back through teachers to students uh, as best as I can. And I also teach in an online teacher training uh, diploma program that leads to masters through uh, Vancouver Island University. So that all fits nicely together. So I keep with my passions and in this pandemic, my passion has led me into now doing a lot more virtual conferences and supporting others who are looking to transition things to the online environment uh, when we're sequestered away and well, you can call it lockdown or you can call it self-isolation uh, and certainly physical distancing. So it's really put a real sharp focus on the needs around the use of technology that we've been doing for years Matter of fact, distance education, is, as you know, Michael, because we write about this in the State of the Nation work that you do, um, is uh, it's been over 100 years in British Columbia, where I reside, that there's been distance learning that's been occurring in a formalized fashion. And before it was informal. So it's exciting to be in this area, but it's also very challenging in that there's such a rapid transition that people are trying to do to do something suitable online, but it's just not it's just not quite there. And I know I'm probably preceding and precipitating your second question. No, no, that's good. Um, so, I mean, over the years you've been or been working with school leaders right from the school level up to yeah. the departmental level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that in mind, you know, we've had a real disruption in the the way in which this current school year has gone. And in many cases, for a lot of jurisdictions, the way it's ended. I know BC is at least starting to come back um, next mm. month. Uh, what, advice uh, next you, <laughs> what advice would you give for school leaders on how they can essentially accommodate that disruption by changing what it is that they would normally do to shut down a school year and to get the next school year rolling? Well, I think we have to think in terms of schooling, in terms of all of its dimensions. We tend to think of it in terms of classroom learning or book learning. Uh, and, and that's only a, a one component of it. And and in, in my view, what the pandemic has, has really peeled back to showcase to me is that uh, having some sort of a consistent and available space for students to access is critical. And so right now in the emergency remote teaching aspect, a lot of teachers are trying to put that connection or that material uh, classroom into a digital learning environment. To me, I don't think we should ever have not been there. And certainly it was a lot of teachers who are migrating a lot of their, their work into Google Classroom into Microsoft Teams and 365 environments into uh, LMSs 
as well. So that's been going on for a while, but it's not been the primary driver or understanding of what a classroom teacher is about. And to me, I, I would argue right now that every single teacher from kindergarten on up should have some kind of a digital learning space that they support for their students to interact with and about content as well as themselves. Right now, the critical driver, because British Columbia is back in school, is the critical driver is the social emotional well-being of those children that show up there. Not all of them have a nice home. Not all of them live in a place where they can have access to online. And so I think that there's a critical need that is, needs to be addressed for, by students, by schools, for the students who do not have access to all those resources, who need the emotional support, assistance, the one-on-one -on -one with teachers. And I think that's what the physical spaces can really help amplify and provide. And that is the focus. Not unlike we saw a lot of stories in the beginning of uh, teachers getting in cars and driving around the neighborhoods for their elementary schools and saying, hey, we're here. We're worried about you. We miss you. A very strong connection socially and emotionally, I think, is the what you really want to focus on now. But for September, the second thing you need to focus on is getting those teachers to be comfortable in an online environment, ensuring your students have access to some kind of a device to connect. And if not, they come into the school to do that, but connect with that uh, learning environment that teachers will now have to figure out how to create and how to utilize. So those of the teachers that have been online, they've been at this for a number of years, one. Two, they've also taken specialized training courses uh, or even full master's degrees to understand how best to put pedagogy in a digital learning environment. So I think those are the challenges. Some of them are longer term. In the short term, social emotional well-being of students and getting teachers to start working with technology and online learning environments. Now, you mentioned the remote emergency teaching and some of the, the wonderful things that teachers did this time around. Um, one of the things we do know about pandemics is that they come in waves. Mm -hmm. um, as economies start opening up, there's likely going to be local flare-ups. So there's going to be a lot of school leaders out there that you know are going to be in a district where the district might have to shut down or the contiguous districts might have, or maybe the entire province or state has to shut down again. What can school leaders be doing over the next few months so that they're not caught off guard and left scrambling like we were this time uh, when we transition to that emer emergency remote teaching? I, I think it's except that um, some kind of a digital footprint connection for every single teacher with their students must be in place so that there is a space that is easy to move from. I would argue that it should be almost a primary space for communications and connections about what it is that uh, the activities from in the classroom. So that everything is posted in a digital environment on the assumption that students, every student has an ability to connect there. Um, and so I think that that doesn't go away. So the first thing that I want to focus on, besides the well-being of the kids that come into the school, the second thing is I want teachers to immediately and continue to transition into those digital learning spaces, whether that be a, a Microsoft 365 Teams environment, which a lot of districts have gone to, whether that be a G Suite for Google Classroom, or whether that be a LMS like the you know D2L or Moodle or uh, you know Blackboard Learn or any or Canvas or any of those other ones, whatever the district licenses. The critical piece here is the in local parentis. So I teach work with uh, adult students. I don't have to worry about. I can go out onto the web. I can go onto websites. I don't have to worry about the privacy issues. But as a classroom teacher, I have to worry about the privacy for and protection of that for students. District licensed tools, some of them you might like as a classroom teacher, some of them you might not like and you want to use, you know, you want to use uh, um, a different one, uh, but it's not sanctioned or approved by the school district. Stick with the tools that are there. A lot of them are getting better and they're robust enough. But every single teacher, I would say, is what you want as a district leader is to get them comfortable working in that environment and help them and train them as to how to use that. And I think that that should be the priority becoming through now to September, but it doesn't end in the fall. 
it continues on and it should continue to grow as a learning space for teachers to move to. All right, very good. So this has been another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with has been Randy Labonte. Thank you.